Welcome, um, welcome everybody to Mavern's Teacher Takeover. We are so glad that you're here. Welcome. Um, we are, and, and hi from Dallas, Leo, we're thrilled that you are here. Uh, we have a little important question for you while we are trickling in um, and joining our meeting today. Uh, we have an important question for you. So if we can switch to that next slide, what we'd love for you to do is introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us who you are, and this includes our our presenters as well. This includes all of us coming in from all over the country. We were thrilled to see um, the registrations that were pouring in from all over the place and some international as well, which is always fun to see. Um, but please tell us who you are in the chat. Um, and we have a very important question for you. This is teacher takeover. This is a teacher takeover event. This is a one hour focused on you. So we want you to we want you to tell us if you had all all the power in the world, what would you change? What would you change and what would you fix or improve or change in your world as a teacher? If you had all that power, what would you change? Tell us in the chat. We want to hear from you. This is all about a teacher takeover. Um, we want to really ensure that you have that voice and you have that power today. Uh, we have an exciting lineup of speakers that are here to share with you their experiences um, using MathLearn, partnering with us in different ways all over the country but we want to hear from you. Uh, we want you to ask questions. We want this to be an opportunity for you to share, for you to get answers to things that you're thinking through. I know through the registration, some of us had questions about AI, about warm-up activities, about all kinds of fun stuff. So um, we will get to all of those things during our teacher takeover today. But um, as we're trickling in, please do in the chat, answer this question for us. Um, tell us, of course, who you are and if if you had all the power in the world, what would you change? Um, so uh, Victor says, Beyonce performing at a PD at each school. I love it. I love it. Uh, talk about engagement. Talk about excitement. Um, absolutely love that. Okay. I see Daniel's here uh, from Cooper Middle School in Cobb County. Hi, Daniel. Good to see you. Um, and we have Candy and Ravi, some of our amazing speakers. Leo says, um, I would buy briskets for lunch for all of the teachers every week. This is a Dallas person talking now, so we can tell how this is a very good idea. Um, Leo, I love it, I love it, good stuff. Uh, Mara says, if you had all the teacher power, you would mandate teacher work days. Ah, oh, yes, please mandate those teacher work days that are actually focused on getting teachers to get the things that they need to get done and not, not um, you know, busying us up with other things. I love it. It. Uh, Cynthia's here. Hi, Cynthia. Welcome. One thing you would change is classroom layout. Make it more equity focused. Okay, excellent. And you're here from Chicago. Welcome. Um, make the classroom layout more equity focused. Absolutely love that. Um, Robbie says endless supplies for teachers. We want those expo markers. <laughs> Simple things, but oh, so powerful. So powerful indeed. Um, so really thrilled to hear all of that. Okay, last one. Marlon from Memphis. Memphis, um, you would make it so your district was Apple certified and you could get all the new Apple products. I see there's some ulterior motive going on there, but totally, completely fair. Um, and I love, love those suggestions. So um, thank you, folks. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, again, keep those coming in. As we trickle in, uh, introduce yourself. The best thing that we want to have happen is for you to meet somebody new, for you to make a new friend while you are here um, during teacher takeover today. So let's get us started um, and officially kick off our event. Um, welcome, welcome to Mad Learn's Teacher Takeover. Uh, we are thrilled to share some amazing things with you. Um, and we have two hosts for today's, today's meeting. Um, we have Doreen. Frempong Ba, who is here with us from Accra, Ghana. Um, she is our marketing coordinator and our head of internships, um, and absolutely fabulous. You've probably gotten a lot of emails from Doreen. Uh, whenever you see an email from Doreen, please respond. Um, but, uh, but Doreen is here with us from Accra, Ghana. Doreen, say hello. Introduce yourself to us. Thank you, Alethea. Hi, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. 
seeing all of you here. It's it's so exciting and we can't wait to get into the teacher takeover. So as Olivia said, my name is Doreen Frimpomba. I've been with Madeline for about seven years. Um, I used to live in Atlanta, Georgia, but then I moved back to Accra a few years ago. So I work remotely from Accra, Ghana. I manage our internship program. I, I And then I also am marketing coordinator at Madeline. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here. Welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Um, and I am Alethea Master. I am the founder and CEO of MadLearn. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and I'm so excited to share with you today some of these amazing teacher voices helping us celebrate Women's History Month, Black History Month, also February, you know, Love Month, all that good stuff. Um, so uh, we're, we're thrilled to have all of these phenomenal educators here with us today. But I want to tell you a little bit about our team. So we have a global team. We have team members in India, in Ghana, all across the United States. Um, and that means that we get this right here is our office. This is our virtual space. This is this is where we work. We work from anywhere. I'm actually in Colorado at the moment. Um, and so we get to work from anywhere. But what that does is it allows us to really help in introduce students to the idea of a global company and a global workforce through virtual internships. So we have an internship program where students are able to dial in from anywhere, get experience working with a real team, a real company from all over the world. Um, and it's a phenomenal program. Doreen can share some information about that in the chat. If your students have done MadLearn or if they are doing MadLearn currently, um, they are eligible to intern with us. Many of the teachers who are sharing with us today have had interns um, that are at our company, past, current, future. Um, and so we can talk a little bit about that as well. But speaking of our global team, we are growing and we are expanding. And I'm so excited to take this opportunity to welcome the newest member of our team. Caroline Westervelt um, is in Palm Beach, Florida. She is a former educator. She actually used MadLearn in her classroom for several years. Um, and we are so excited to have her join our team on the customer success team. She'll be working working directly with Alexandra and Greg on our team uh, to support all of you as teachers in the classroom to make magic happen. Um, so join me in giving a round of applause to Caroline and wel welcoming her on our team. Um, she's absolutely fabulous and we cannot wait for you to meet her. So welcome, Caroline. Um, Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Of course, of course. So without further ado, um, we have four phenomenal voices um, that are going to share some of their experiences with you. Again, this is teacher takeover. So we are taking a back seat and we are highlighting your voices. Um, but a very important part of this is for you to ask us questions, to ask each other questions, to, to brainstorm like, how do you do that? Or what does that mean? Or tell me more about that. We want to hear from you. So as we go, I will be, and our team will be moderating the chat, we'll be helping to answer those questions, but we really want to hear what you're thinking about, what you're doing, any struggles you've had with potentially thinking about bringing more STEM, more app development, computer science, coding into your classroom, um, because we have some amazing experts here in the room to take us through that process. So. First up, we have Ravi, Ravi from Lufkin ISD in Lufkin, Texas. Um, Ravi, please unmute yourself. Tell us all about you. You are you are one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, not just because you're phenomenal, but also because we're like we we are the same people. Um, but yeah. uh, but, <laughs> but but you found us at a conference about a year ago. So we just celebrated our one year meetiversary. Yes. A uh, fun fact. But Ravi, tell us all about you. Tell us some of your experiences with MadLearn. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. I'm not sure. Here's the first part. I'm not sure what time of day it is, <laughs> but good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robbie Kirkendall, and I am from a small town in East Texas that no one has ever probably heard of, but it is about two hours north of Houston, and um, we are in Lufkin, Texas. It is a lumber town, but um, I am a uh, R2 Gear Up Coordinator. Um, if you are not familiar with Gear Up, it is a federal grant that stands for uh, Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. So it is a seven-year grant, and our goal is really to close the gap for low-income students um, 
or who are and get them ready and prepared and their families as well for post-secondary education. So we do that with a college and career focus. And so about uh, maybe a month after being hired last year, um, we had to attend this required virtual training and I saw um, a STEM kit that was, you know, that was uh, that was a session that I could go to. And I go to the STEM kit session and there's Mad Learn. And I'm super excited about everything that I heard. Uh, I feel like I'm a STEM kid at heart and it was something I never got to do. Um, maybe in my next life, I'll find something that I can do with science because I always loved it, but that's not a profession I went into. And so um, I learned about Mad Learn because they created the STEM kit for INSEP, our, our national partner. And I, I feel like the rest is history from there. Um, you know, met Alethea and Alexandra, and they are phenomenal. I've already said that when our grant is over in seven years and I'm looking for a job, I will be working at Mad Learn. Um, so that that's how great I think of this company and, you know, and, and these two women. Um, but after, you know, going through this workshop, um, contacted them. And actually last summer, we had a Mad Learn uh, app camp for our Gear Up students. So we had at the time, sixth and seventh graders. And um, so we spent, they, the kids spent five days and Alexandra came to little old Lufkin, Texas and uh, facilitated a mobile app development camp for our sixth and seventh graders. And I feel like I thought I knew what to expect but I did not know what to expect. And this camp was so amazing because I don't know that students took this camp and, you know, chose this camp and they knew how truly creative they were going to be. And I saw some of the most amazing things um, from, from start to finish. So in this app camp, they go through the um, design process, the six steps of the design process. And, you know, they really didn't get on their computers, which, you know, they were itching to get on their laptops the whole time. But I, it probably wasn't until maybe day three, starting at day, maybe end of day two, and it might have been something minor. But but part of that process was, was in their brain and them taking the time to think and break down. Um, Alifia, if you could go to the, my next slide for me. I want it, one of the pictures I have um, on this slide. These are my students from the camp this summer. And that first picture is one of my absolute favorite um, activities. That is the brain map. And that was one of my favorite activities because, you know, when we look at an app, we we tap on it and we just start using it. But there's so much involved in actually developing that app from start to finish. And I love that my students got a chance. They didn't know what to expect. I mean, on the first day of camp, I think either I asked or Alexandra asked, raise your hand if your parents signed you up for this camp and you didn't choose it. And I think it was every single kid in my camp. Every single kid there was like, uh, my parent chose this camp. Um, and so they really had no idea what to expect. And this exercise with the brain map really set it off for me because every single student started with something as small as, you know, uh, an animal or I don't, I don't even, I can't even think of all of them because at the end of the day and there, you know, these white sheets of paper, they're all around the room and every single student created a brain map. And you just keep expanding. And what that turned into were the layers of their apps. And so, you know, when we pick up a phone and we see our app, you know, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my Marriott Bonvoy app. Well, there's their logo. But what comes after that? What's the next layer? And so this brain map allowed my students to dig deep creatively. You know, they may not have been the most knowledgeable at technology, but they didn't have to, to create this, to create that brain map. So day one, it was on paper. And I really loved how they broke it down. Some of them actually used that brain map to create their app. Some had a completely different idea from their brain map, uh, you know, from what they, what they used on their app. Um, and I, it was, it was just neat to see what these students can come up with. Um, one of my other favorite exercises that Alexander did, it was a product 
I forget now what it was. It was um, the kids had to come up with like a logo for a product in about seven minutes. And yeah, it was really quick. I would be stressed out because I'm not that creative. And so they had to come up with a product, a logo for a product in seven minutes. They had no idea what the product was, knew nothing about it. And they had their paper, they had their pencils, map colors, everything. And she says, okay, here's your product. It's a pencil. And what my kids came up with for logos and slogans in seven minutes was the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Again, we've not even gotten to the part where they are developing their app. So there's so much more in, you know, in Mad Learn and, and what you're what you're getting from these from the from their tools and their design processes. And it's not just technology. So if you are not a tech person, I I know what I know, but I'm no rest in peace, Steve Jobs. You know, I I am not. I'm I'm not the biggest tech person and neither were a lot of my kids and it didn't hold them back because all they needed to do was to take a chance and let loose, relax and be creative. And what came out of that seven minutes of a product design, any company would pick up. Any company would pick one of those logos. We actually, I've actually found a student and Alex, Andrew and I both said, oh my God, are you an art class? This is amazing. He said, no, I don't have time. I'm in band in Spanish. So it was an amazing outlet for him to, to be able to create that day. And so I just wanted to share some of those pictures. Um, and I wanted to share the one in the middle because, um, you know, Olivia's picked some amazing people to work for her company. And Alexandra, uh, we clicked as soon as you got here and uh, we both have crazy last names and our kids had to call us both Miss K. But I chose that picture in the middle because I just want you guys to see how excited and happy my kids were with the facilitator that, you know, that was sent to us who we didn't know and they didn't know. And that was on the last day they got their T-shirts at camp and they're all trying to squeeze in close to her so they could take a selfie on her phone. And so it was five fast and go days, you know, of summer, but it was an amazing opportunity to do the summer camp. And then their finished products, Alifia, if you wouldn't mind going back to the first slide, um, they, the finished products were, I don't, I would love to do this, but I think I'd stress myself out. So the finished products were amazing. So the third one there that's, that's up the highest called Sport of Fame, um, at the on the last day of camp, the students actually get to have basically a Shark Tank presentation. And so after working all week and coming up with their designs and Alexander showing them how to create, really, and how to use the tools that Madler provides, um, the one that's called Sport of Fame is uh, my student, uh, one of my eighth grade students who she won the Shark Tank competition. And this is the coolest app. Basically, you go on and as you see, she has a list of different sports. You can click on that sport. And when you click on that sport, it tells you about three professional athletes in that sport. It gives you statistics on those on those athletes. Um, she did a lot. We had no idea this whole time. And I know this young woman personally. Um, she she dug deep. We actually thought she was not enjoying camp. She doesn't speak a lot. Um, she kind of withdrawn to herself, not withdrawn, but to herself. So we really didn't think she was enjoying camp. Turns out it's because she was doing the research for this app. And this app is amazing and has as many layers as any app that's on my phone right now. Um, so she won first place. And to the right of that is an app called Cake It, which if you were into baking and Food Network, this is a cake design app. You can pick your shape. You can pick your flavor. So that one second place. And then I chose two others that were my favorite, just to give you guys an idea of, of the spectrum that, uh, of creativity that, that my students came up with in this, in this four, I say four days of creating and the last day of presenting. So the one that has Simon, um, the first app there, it is actually an app called Game Hub. And it was a group of boys and they decided, I wanna have all my games in one spot. Let's put old school board games. So they had Simon, they had Checkers, 
uh, rock, there was actually a rock, paper, scissors, uh, I'm not sure what to call it now, rock, paper, scissors feature that you could pull and use from um, the Madlearn, uh, I'm going to call it toolbox. And uh, so they had Game Hub and created old school games on an app. And while we had a first and second place winner, the app there that's purple and green is called Time is Precious. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most amazing apps. This young man who is now in seventh grade this year has been writing a comic strip. He finished the comic strip and he was starting to work on part two of his comic strip. And this is a very extensive comic strip where he's drawn the characters. He's created the plot. It's like a fully developed comic. He turned his comic strip into this app. It is probably one of the coolest things I, that was, that blew me away the most out of this camp. I don't know if he had done that before, but, you know, work smart, not hard. And he had created this comic strip. And so he decided, I'm going to turn my comic strip into an app. And then people can follow my comic strip and just keep reading it on this app. So the, it was, that was, and I'm telling I wish I could go in there and show you because he did all of the artwork, developed all of the characters. And so that's what, you know, character info about session one. That is the coolest app. Yeah. And I, and actually speaking of, um, when, when we're able, we're going to put a couple links to these apps, um, in the chat so that you can look at them or the QR code. Um, so you can look at them and see what some of those examples are. Um, and we'll include those in these slides when we send them later as well. But Robbie, thank you so very much, uh, for sharing those stories with us. Um, so many good tidbits and snippets, right? And, and for those of us who have never heard about MadLearn before, we have no idea what MadLearn is. Um, at, at our core, we're using this handy little device called our cell phone and the fact that our kids are obsessed with their cell phones as a hook to bring them in to STEM and computer science. So, so the MadLearn program is mobile app development. We teach kids how to make apps. And in Robbie's situation, um, that was one example where we came in, we did a four or five day app camp and students um, made some phenomenal products throughout the summer. Um, so many great ideas, offline activities, uh, not using the tech, using the tech, everything combined. Um, so please folks put questions in the chat if you have any for Robbie, um, any comments, feedback. I know many of us in the room are already using MadLearn in our classrooms in one way or another. And you came in because you wanted to hear some ideas, hear some um, you know, different things that are happening. So um, I know there was a few ideas that Robbie shared there that you may not have heard of before in terms of some of those new activities. So definitely ask her more about those. Um, but we are going to move on to our next presenter. Robbie, thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, and I'm excited to introduce Mara to you. Mara is at an elementary school on Long Island um, and has been doing MadLearn for a couple of years now. Um, and she, correct me if I'm wrong, Mara, you found out about um, MadLearn through a conference, I think, maybe. Um, I, well, you tell us the story. Tell us all about yes. it. <laughs> tell, tell us who yeah. you are, what you do, what is all the magic that's happening in Mara world. Sure. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, so this is my second year learning ma using MadLearn, and it kind of fell in my lap. Um, I am our gifted education teacher for our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders across my district. So we're an elementary district only with three different schools. So I hop around to each of the three schools teaching all fourth, fifth, and sixth who are in this gifted program. Um, I have 103 students this year, usually around 100. So division about 30 per grade divided up. And basically I get free reign with my program, which is really exciting. Um, I gear it mostly towards what my students needs are differently each year, but they love the hands-on, the STEM, the computer science, the technology, robotics, whatever it is. I think I was muted. Is it okay? Oh. Now we hear, yep. Oh, I, I didn't know if I muted myself, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, what's really cool is if something falls into my lap or it's shared with me or I see it at a conference, I can do it. So um, I believe ManLearn was purchased for our library media center, but they hadn't gotten around to using it. And they said, Mara, you wanna give it a try? I was like, absolutely. Um, I remember I did a quick Zoom with Alexandra. I got all the info and I was hooked from there. 
So I do this with my sixth grade students each year. Um, and because my students are gifted students, I need to slow them down. Um, if I show them this platform, and as soon as I say we're making an app, I tell them at the beginning of the year, and we get to it about December, January, um, they would just log on themselves and make it. So I have to slow them down and really focus on the process. So here are some things that I do um, to get my students. I provide them with a whole packet and work their way through. Um, I see my students for an hour and a half sessions once a week. So this takes us a few weeks. Um, we work on this for maybe six to seven weeks at a time. So we do a lot of planning and research. Um, my first step is to hook and engage my students. So as um, Alethea said before, they're obsessed with their phones. So I really play on that. I show them a couple cool graphics like on like you see on the screen. Um, I love the one on top. It only goes till 2020, but connected devices per person about six to seven. Um, and I think that's crazy. And then my kids are like, what are you talking about? Your AirPods, your watch, your phone, your laptop, your school computer. It's crazy. So we know that our students and ourselves were so into technology. So I really like to play on that. Um, first thing we do to just get them excited is we do our app wars. So I created this little sheet you see on screen. Um, I have my students do glows and grows and rating the app for three apps that they find in the Mad Store. So I give them the links in their Google Classroom. They take a look, they explore, they play some games, they have some fun. I give them about 30 to 45 minutes to do this. Um, I give them time to kind of just explore. They love playing. Um, if anyone's seen the potato world, my students are obsessed with that one. Every single person plays it every time and they play the potato world song. So whoever Fun fact, that Mara, app. that app is probably one of the most viewed apps I'm on- I'm sure it app. is. It's my Over students who are view viewing it a hundred times. <laughs> So whoever made that credit to them and I love that they click on that because it's funny and silly because they're like, why would you make an app about a potato? And the point is you can make an app about anything you want. Um, and they made it good. They put a song. It's catchy. So um, I allow them to just explore. So they do the glows. It says what is done well. They just have to bullet or write a sentence or two grows. What could the app do better? So this could be looking at it even just from a oh, it's not colorful enough, it's not engaging enough, they don't have videos, they don't have music, or it could be the actual information. And then least, um, last but not least, they rate the app out of 10 and tell me why. Maybe it's an eight out of 10, nine out of 10, one out of 10, wasn't engaging. I love to do this because this takes about a whole session for me and it slows my students down to really think about, here's what I saw in the bad store, what do I wanna do for my app? And now they start buzzing. This is even before they know what they're going to do, but they're just thinking about, oh, that's cool. I could do it on math or social studies or anything I'm interested in, like potatoes. Um, so next, after we hook and engage, um, you can switch to the next slide, I believe. Perfect. Now we plan and research. So um, this top one, uh, this top chart is provided by MadLearn. And I created the two slides at the bottom. So I give my students this as part of the packet. They get this kind of brainstorming um, graphic organizer. And I have I tell them to write two or three things in each section. So they have to two or three favorite subjects, sports, art, towns, everything, and other, just other ideas they're thinking. Then I have them select their top three across the board. And then hopefully we narrow it down to the one that they're most interested in, or at least one or two. Um, then I provide them with this brainstorming page and research notes, and I give them the freedom to just explore. Um, exploring on MadLearn, exploring just Google. I give them a couple of quick links they can refer to depending on what their topics are after we conference with it. Um, and they're brainstorming and they're researching and they're just figuring out, okay, what do I even like know about this topic and want to put in pictures, videos, places, things like that. Um, and like I said, this really slows my students down to get thinking about the back end of what goes into planning an app and not just doing it. Also in the packet, now we're up to creating. So I give my students this student checklist. They need to include a custom logo, all about an author page, table of contests, home screen shell, at least three informational slides. But this year we bumped that up to six because they were surpassing that. Um, an image or video page and a feedback page. And also this year, we added that they needed to include some type of um, interactive component, I believe you call it, either like a, um, a coding game using the JavaScript in the coding section, either a game or flashcards or something like that. 
So after my students look at the checklist, they get to create and plan. And of course, they love this. And this takes us a few weeks. Um, I put all of the Mad Learn tutorials that I think would be helpful in the Google Classroom. And those are right on Mad Learn. They save my life and they save the kids' lives. Um, and I had said it before we started, but I am constantly in contact with Alethea and Alexandra, and they answer within minutes. Um, you guys have our students laughing. In the hour and a half session, they'll be like, Miss Carfinkel, how do you do this? I'm like, wait, let me email. I email. You guys get back to me within five minutes. And I'm like, oh, they said this is how. And one of my students said, they're like, how do they really answer you that quickly? I'm like, I don't know. They must be at their computers all day, but they're on it. So thank you guys for that. Um, so thank you for answering our questions because they can easily, we can play around and adjust from there. Of course, my students love making the custom logos on coollogo.com, which you guys have the connection with. Um, and then when they're all done creating, um, you can see some of our finished ones. We get to share them aloud in class as well, kind of like Robbie said. Um, I love the idea of doing like a Shark Tank thing. So what we do is I have all of my students copy and paste their links and their QR codes into a Google Doc and a Google Excel sheet. And what it does is then I have access to everybody's and I share it in our Google Classroom. So all of my students, because they're at three different schools, can see what the other ones are doing. So even though I can't do it aloud, you know, with everybody at one time, my sixth graders can all see each other's work. I also pop this whole Excel sheet right into um, my parent Facebook page. So all my parents get to see them and click on them with their phones. Um, my students go home and show them, which is so cool. So these are some of my favorites that I love. Um, I have a, a strong competitive dancer in my group. So she did Just Dance. She created that logo on, um, I see that you're putting that we use Canva. That's awesome. Um, my school's a little iffy with Canva because of the policies, but we use Design Evo to create really cool logos. She made that on Design Evo. Um, Just Dance. I love this one. It's an app app. Um, and she confused me at first with what she was going with, but she was talking and she said, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you don't know what appetizer to order or when you're home for football Sunday and you don't know what appetizer to make. I'm like, that's genius. So in there you have a quiz based on like what kind of foods you like. She was including like a spinning the wheel, kind of like a wheel of names type of thing to choose um, what app you'd like. Um, she has gotten all about the author page, a couple quizzes, and then she has links in there also to say, okay, you want to make homemade spinach and artichoke dip? Well, here's the link to the video and the recipe. So that's pretty cool. Um, next, I love this. We have an all about burgers. So anything you want about burgers, I'm pretty sure that was inspired from Potato World. Um, but all about burgers, there's um, best burger chains, burger songs, an easy, medium, hard, and impossible quiz. Not sure what that one is. Um, but he really loved burgers and wanted to run with it, and I wasn't going to tell him no. Next one is about HTML, and I think this is really cool because I gave my students complete freedom to choose whatever they want. My only um, parameters were that it had to be informational app. So no games or things like that. They can include games, but had to be giving the consumer information about something. And this student is really tech savvy and loves computers and he's an awesome coder. So he wanted everybody to know all about HTML. He even was putting Python in there and CSS and everything like that. And I think that's so, and JavaScript. And it's so cool because obviously Madlearn uses that. We ha you have that in your program. So he was copying, pasting and including information has really great links, talks about all things that you can do on a desktop, on a laptop, everything like that from HTML. And he even created a snake game, which we all love, the little snake game that comes around. And then to go with pop culture at the moment, this year, this is my third all about Taylor Swift. So they love her. I do too. So all about Taylor Swift. They have so many different links. And if only you could see inside those how many different inner screens they have to connect to concert tickets. They even wanted a link Ticketmaster in there. Um, they have all her videos and it, and it's just really cool how they, they took something that they loved and made it an app. So I think that's the biggest thing that I love about this. It combines the computer science and the STEM and the technology and the engineering part that I want to teach my students with what they want to learn about because they have full freedom to do that. And this is one of our favorite sixth grade um, 
units. We spend a lot of time on it. Fourth and fifth graders know we do it. So they're coming up to sixth grade soon and they're going to be doing the same. And I just really love to see the creations that we have. And I think that every year I get a little better with my planning and, and you guys get better with answering my questions, but we're learning more and more. And I think Robbie said it best. You don't know like what to prepare for. Um, I try to be really prepared with what questions they're going to ask, but then they come out with things and I'm like, I don't know, but we figure it out together. <laughs> and and that's just, you, you help us so much. You really do. And, and I love just to comment. I love the, um, new updates that Mad Learn has this year because even doing it for two or three years felt like this year was so much more user-friendly for my students and anyway, no really I think I said that to you as soon as you launched it and um I could really tell my students were able to be so much more successful and less frustrated with little things I mean even this even the saving of the page without having to press save is is a godsend for us so we really appreciate it and I I love using Mad Learn last year um, I presented at Asset Conference about Mad Learn and how it really motivates my students to to be just their own kind of their own advocate for themselves and really get involved in the classroom. So I'm a sole, you know, believer in Mad Learn, and I think if you're not and you're in here, you should hop on it. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you so much, Mara. You are awesome, and we love hearing how you've learned and tweaked things over the years, and we've learned and tweaked things, right? Um, any technology that is not changing all the time is stagnant, um, and we cannot be stagnant. And so we are always adding new things. We're always figuring out ways to make it easier for you as a teacher to do what you need to do. By the way, classes is a new feature that we have. You can create a class in Mad Learn. And, and click on that and see all your kids in that class. Um, we didn't have that before. So little things like that, but we want to make sure that that's constantly um, happening. So super great um, uh, tips and tricks for us, Mara. Thank you so much. We have a question from Thank Ashley you. in the chat. Um, and uh, the, Ashley's question is, I teach a core class, chemistry and forensic science. How can I integrate this tool in a way that it doesn't take over and become a coding class or, or a tech class? It's still, I still teach chemistry and forensic science. I have to focus on that. How can I integrate um, MadLearn and app development into my classroom? So I want to open that up um, as a question. I know Risa in the chat also responded with some suggestions and some ideas, but um, Alexandra, anyone else, um, tell us some ideas for how we might do that in our chemistry forensic science uh, class. Well, I was going to say I did it in a medical detectives class. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm coaching because I haven't introduced myself yet. But anyway, um, so I've used it and that's kind of what I'll speak to in my um, minute is that so we use, um, um, I'll just, you know, Project Lead the Way, which has different um, apps. But again, I just personally, I, you know, kind of found the way and delivery that the kids were kind of showing what they know to be kind of dry. So to speak to your example specifically about forensic um science we did it with a the kids traced um diseases like how they're you know how they go and how they spread and so their show what they know uh project lead the way had a very basic like hey they create a slide deck um and so how i present to teachers because i again i'm team madler and we love doing that is like literally think of it anything that you could create in a slide deck presentation that's how i always approach content area projects so it's more the front loading of the um, like what you want the kids to accomplish. So giving them the kind of like the PBL, what is the big question you want them to answer? So in forensic science, what was the thing that caused this whatever? Um, and then the great part about MadLearn is it totally speaks to what you were saying. Like it doesn't require you to like the amount of coding, the amount of tech, I guess to say, is totally up to you as the teacher because they can literally, if you, the same time that you would teach, take to teach them a, to create a Google slide deck, you can make their apps that, and I, I don't want to say basic because it's it's really not basic, but it's like as a computer science teacher, I teach the HTML, make them write it. As an engineering teacher, and I'll talk to that, like, they, like we focus more on the whatever you want your big question to be. So I think it totally ties into forensic science because if kids are taking data, if kids are taking, um, you know, they can code. So as far like differentiation, absolutely. Your kids can absolutely code if you have kids that are like, hey, I created this great app. Um, I love Mara's point about like having to give to kids, having to slow them down. Like Mad Learn kind of allows kids to really get in where they fit in. So if you want them to focus on the forensic science, I would suggest um, putting them in those project teams. So you have a, you know, a person that's responsible for the content, a person that 
you know, if you have a coder in that class, let them totally take that over. Um, that's it. Cause I'm, I'm talking about what I'm supposed to talk about. So. No, no. And that's a perfect yeah, that, segue. Yes. Uh, that is a perfect segue to our next awesome teacher uh, <laughs> and presenter for today. So we have Victor Hicks, who is a phenomenal educator, um, the founder of Coding with Culture. He does some amazing work all over the place um, and gets to consult with us um, on all kinds of fun projects. And so he's had an opportunity to use MadLearn in a lot of different settings, one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutoring with kids, uh, camps that are happening during spring break or summer break, um, facilitating camps live at schools, and, uh, uh, you know, in the classroom, working with students in the classroom and doing app development in elective courses, core subject areas. So um, lots of different things that you've had an experience with. Victor, tell us a little bit about uh, what you've learned, some lessons you've learned, some things that you think work really well with your experiences. Absolutely. So I was going to say one of the things I love about MadLearn, um, we have used it totally all over the place. Um, it, coding with culture, we've had the pleasure to use it um, specifically to teach computer science. So we've had the, um, make sure I'm sharing the right screen so you guys can see, um, the computer science component. So if you do want to teach HTML, I've used that as a way of um, really allowing kids to see the full gamut of what technology looks like. And I think that's always, that's the big check mark for me. The big plus sign that Mad Learn gets from me is because I think we, we tend to teach kids these very specific skills in computer science or in technology or in STEM without really doing a great job of connecting those to those real world skills. So although, you know, it's again, as a computer science teacher, I think coding is the greatest skill in the world, but you have kids where that's truly is just not going to be their thing, right? But and fun fact, at, fun fact, y'all, I don't know how to code and I run a tech company. Right. So like I mean, that's thinking. I mean, it's a thing. Like we don't, we're not really looking at um, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't require kids to be tech experts. But the thing that I love about that is the fact that it allows them to experience these real world tech scenarios because everybody is not going to be the tech superstar right everybody's not going to be the person on that project team in the real world situations that we're preparing them for um you know i don't they're not going to necessarily always need that skill set so i think it's important that we you know give them those situations if you are creative there's space for you in the tech world to be able to answer those questions you know if you are the coder and again i kind of i love the idea that mara gave them the uh the checklist because that gives them okay hey how are you guys here's the thing i need to see you know again i always tell them as coaches i step out of the realm of teacher i'm i'm the facilitator i'm not available to sit and walk you through the steps here's your team figure out you know with these tangible steps and i think that is the those connectors that i think a lot of times we miss in stem is that the kids create these the creativity when you put these tools in front of them is amazing right but they also, it gives them the like, hey, you don't ever have to code in life. Let me let me give you that project hack. There are so many jobs that you yeah. can make this amazing amount of money, have this, you know, amazing, and they need your creativity. Now you need to be able to tech speak. So you need to have an understanding of what, you know, what that looks like, you know, to speak to the teacher's point that asked about the forensic science, like, here's the end point, right? We look at user design, what the user wants. Your job is to create this app that speaks to this issue in forensic science. Now that's it, you know, you can, yeah. and again, it allows kids, it really differentiates itself, all the buzzwords that you hear. But the thing I think that stands out the most is um, it does um, allow kids to get those real world experiences. So while, while you're pulling up what you want to share with us, Victor, um, I do want to address, we had a question earlier about AI um, and some of the AI components that we have in MadLearn and that you can have access to. We're going to put a link um I think, uh, to this in the chat, but um, we have a brand new activity, which is very simple um, at its at its face. It's called Coding with AI, um, and it is introducing students to AI and to using chat GPT to code with them um, and to help them code. So while Victor said a lot of the kids may not be interested in coding and they may not, that might not be their thing, we can actually help them um, do a little bit more with their apps. We can help them get 
get a little bit more creative even um, by being able to code with AI um, and understanding responsible use, right? Just like when Google came out all those years ago, we were all scared and we're like, how do we do it? What do we do? And now we can't imagine life without a Google, Google search engine. Um, that is the same thing with AI. Some of our schools may have it blocked at the moment. Um, that's okay. It's a process. We're going to evolve in how we understand it and how we use it, but it's here to stay. Um, so we do have some great AI activities. We're building out a whole new AI unit. Um, so, so keep an eye out for that. Um, which will be coming um, at some point soon. But um, definitely take a look within, if you do have access to Mavler already, within the curriculum module, make sure you go to the coding um, um, extension and take a look at that coding with AI activity. We'd love to have um, have have your feedback on that and uh, share that with you. Victor, take it away. Tell us what, you're, what we're looking at. All right, absolutely. So we, um, and I kind of wanted to talk to um, you guys from the kind of middle of the teacher row, because I know sometimes in those eight, in those spaces, you're like, oh, they're mad learned people, you know, they know the folks, they tell like they're already. So I definitely wanted to speak. I'm currently working with a charter school and just to kind of speak to the versatility of mad learn, um, serving as an engineering teacher, um, as one of my friends is just gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. So but to say it allows me even as and of course I'm a teacher, so it's not like just being a long term sub, but it's really allowed me to kind of go in and not allow her to rest, um, but also feel like kids are getting the standards right. So we talk about the different things that we have to cover. So our sixth graders, same app, um, six and seventh graders, because our standards here in Georgia and engineering are very heavy on um design thinking and the, the engineering process. So it looks at the if you notice the mad learn several teachers have spoken to that. Um, we look at those steps, right? Now, the same app, same unit, um, same user face. My eighth graders, our standards are based on systems learning. So looking at the same exact process using the same software, um, they're looking at how the big how for creating their app is how do we communicate this point as a system? So how do the screens interact? How do the buttons, how do all of these interactive pieces of this app? Um, so again, two whole t different sets of standards same thing. So our middle school will end up presenting these apps. We're having a big uh, Shark Tank presentation in March. Um, but again, it allowed me to wrap up a entire unit. And so these kids will have hit these standards. But then as their teacher comes back, she'll be able to transition into whatever she wants to go into for the fourth quarter. Um, so what we're creating, if anybody knows about coding with culture, we are very big on HBCU. So I love to hear about the career and college readiness. Um, another tie-in, their big idea is that they are hired um, as brand designers for this HBCU. So on the front end, um, as they're doing their apps, they also create a brand. So they look at what entrepreneurship means. And then we also do a lot with the logos. But um, again, a diverse way of looking at that, we look at the logo for their brand. So yes, you're creating this app about this HBCU, but you are blank apps incorporated. So and as you present as the Shark Tank, your job is to also, as we're building these apps, so again, looking at the diversity of tech world or, you know, or tech company, who's in charge of your brand? So you're also presenting this app, but also why should these judges invest in you? So here's the, um, within the uh, user or the platform, the kids actually go through the mind map. So I heard the educator that spoke about the apps on paper. We started out with that, um, but then we challenged kids to actually go in and create um, translate that into the um, into the uh, actual the virtual the digital uh, platform. So again, we talk about that allows kids at that sixth and seventh grade level to see the iterative process. So like now that you've created this big thing, how do we make it make sense in these um, in this digital space? Um, for the AI piece, we do a lot with Canva. Um, what we also talked about is this allowed us to talk about uh, STEM careers and the emerging career of being a prompt editor. So um, I had all of my kids create a lot of their images within um, some of the prompts. We are a Microsoft and Google school. So Jim and I now, if you guys are not aware, um, at Microsoft, which is a little bit, it makes me feel a little bit better as a teacher because they log in with their school accounts, um, allows them to do image generation now. So we do a whole little mini unit on um, how do we how do we learn to uh, generate an image for AI that is efficient. Because again, like it or love it as educators, though as an old school educator makes us a little nervous, it's a skill. And like kids that know how to write or people that know how to write good prompts will be employable. They will be able to exist in this 21st century world we are getting these kids ready for. So that's how we created this uh, app. This was our one of our uh, exemplars. But then the kids right now are in the process of learning about the screen. So as I spoke to eighth grade- Love that. 
their big thing now is looking at how these different parts of the system work together. So if I want to present a website, we take the bigger chunk of the user design and I'll show you one of our kids portfolios um, because our high school kids and we have a big design thinking um, platform. Now, the interesting part is that uh, it's, it's, they use the terms that are a little bit different. So one of the things that I had my kids, because again, thinking about the process is how do we look at mad learn steps? Because again, it's, it's really the same, right? The same idea, just different terms. But I, we look at that. Let me see if I can. And train. Victor, before you change from the screen, I just want to highlight um, what he's got here is a Google site page. Yes. And he's highlighting all of his student apps on one page. Um, so that is something that is an idea for you to also think about. Um, of course, you have oh, actually, to no, no, this, actually, this is one. So this is so when we do a lot of the um, sorry to front load with that part. But when we do a lot of the tests and iteration, this is one student site. So as they're going through the process, they are also creating. These are our st steps for their engineering design process. Nice. So what I have them do is as they go through, I mean, they're pretty much similar. We have a project brief, but what I challenged them was saying, okay, Mad Learn says ideate, define. Let's look at the ways that these are similar. So we, again, I'm a big person on making sure these kids understand this process because once they leave me, this is these are the steps and this is the, the way that they're, or the brain work that they're going to need to know how to do. And so then they present, they screenshot or uh, do a screenshot of their app, learn, uh, their work in Mad Learn. But this allows us to share with students. So as we go in and then we we kind of go through the test process through each one. Um, we use the Mad Learn rubrics are a godsend. It allows me to give students, because a lot of times we tell students like, hey, work together, like evaluate each other. We don't give them the language, Mad Learn does. So there's a student facing rubric to allow your students to um, self assess or assess in groups. Um, but also a teacher one. So, you know, of course, when Coach X is the big bad wolf, I have a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of, of data to support some of my decisions. But I, I just love it because I think, again, we there's so many cool tools out here. But the thing I lo love about Mad Learn is that it's the the world says soft skills. I think they are the absolute most important skills, um, but it uh, allows kids or us as educators to give kids the language and to give kids the opportunities to practice it. Collaboration sounds great, but it's a skill. So we have to it be is. intentional about teaching that. Thank um, and you so much, I Victor. And, and oh. um, I, I do want to be respectful of time. And, I'm sorry, and you know, I run my mouth. Skills. I'm sorry, Frank. No, no, no. <laughs> you, and you said soft skills, and we talk about how they're vital and transferable skills, right? They are vital. They are they are things that kids are going to need and use across the board. Um, but I do I do want to be respectful of time. Um, Victor, one last thing, and then we want to move to our, our last and awesome presenter. Okay, no, no, I'm, I was just going to point out the amazing ability to also um, app smash. So we also do a lot, so that I believe kids reflecting on their work. Um, the kids actually do our HBCU research on um, those that don't, that prefer to do it orally, um, record in Flipgrid. So they also, it's, it allows them to, an opportunity to really analyze their thinking um, and a way as a teacher to get feedback from them outside of just written feedback. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Great ideas, right? And lots of different uh, possibilities for how we're integrating this. Um, Alexandra, I'll let you share uh, share slides back up. But uh, thank you so much, Victor. And you've, you've had the opportunity to do this in so many different settings. So that's extremely helpful um, for us to hear. And you talked about shark tanks. Um, and one thing that I'll, I'll say, I know we have a few of our teachers here from Memphis Shelby County in Tennessee. We were just there on Saturday. They conducted an amazing one day um, app camp. It was called Get Ready, Let's Code 4, because it was the fourth one. Um, but teachers conducted this one day app camp experience. And at the end, the last hour was what they called lunch and launch. So the students um, had lunch, but they were also ones who wanted to came up to the front. They pulled their app up on a big screen. They had a mic and they were talking about and sharing what they built in that one day process. So definitely shine the light on those students, uh, brag on them in every way that you can because they're they're making some great things. So good stuff. Um, last but not least, we have Candy. Candy is a phenomenal gear up educator um, in Cold Spring Oakhurst ISD, also in Texas, um, and uh, and has had the opportunity to see Madeline with her students over the summer, a little bit during the school year as well. Candy, you have to share that story about the, the, the um, science fair student that you told me about recently because that that one blew my mind. I love that. But Candy, tell us all about you and some of the things 
things that you have had an, an opportunity to do with Madlearn? Well, I am um, just down the road from Robbie. I actually live in Lufkin where Robbie works, but um, Cold Spring is about an hour and 10 minutes away. And I laugh when she said that Lufkin was small because Cold Spring, Oakhurst, Consolidated, they think going to Lufkin is the big city. So we, you know, we're, we're very rural out here. Anyway, um, Mad Learn has, I'm the gear up coordinator for um, Cold Spring Oakhurst, and I'm in the same grant as Robbie. Um, so I'm like Robbie, I learned about it at that conference, and we hosted a summer camp last June. Um, and most of our students, you know, parents made them come. And, but what we've seen now is the students are my recruiters because they came to that camp, none of us knew what was gonna happen. And they were just like amazed at what happened and what they did. And so they talk about it and now all the kids are wanting, you know, they're, they're getting that word out and getting other kids involved. The other thing that we've had is like teachers, you know, trying to, we wanted to use it. We bought the, we did the camp and then we bought a, a year software um, subscription, hoping to use it in the classroom. Well, I, I quickly learned, you know, oh, it's just another thing. But what has started happening is the students are teaching the teachers. And so the teachers are starting to get on board because they're seeing what the students are doing. So something that I really liked about summer camp, because with Gear Up, we want that college uh, awareness, but it's also about exploring careers. And I felt like there was more to Mad Learn than just the STEM. They got marketing, they learned about branding, they learned about different careers in that field. And then they, they're public speaking because they're presenting. And, um, and then they're, you know, they, they're picking the subject that they thought they knew everything about, but then they're doing research for their app. So they're learning even more about their subject. So these pictures here are from uh, at the top is uh, one of our students presenting at camp and then our Shark Tank event and then our group of our campers. And then the bottom pictures, um, the bottom with the two students, that one is where uh, those students did the student showcase. So it was a student showcase similar to this um, and they created their presentations and then they presented um, in, in a Zoom call like this um, to other educators. And that was, um, that was amazing opportunity for them. And that's why I love this company because again, it is more than just STEM. They're, they're just continuing to grow and learn in those things. So the other picture at the bottom is um, an hour of code event that one of our, our GT teacher held at the school district. And we brought in the students that were in the Mad Learn camp. They came back to the hour of code and they presented at that event, that family event, and then they spread out around the room to help other students develop apps. Um, so again, it helps them with their leadership skills as well as just learning the STEM and learning about, um, you know, more on their subjects that they're doing. Um, we had uh, one of our campers went to uh, C camp after the mobile app camp and they had to do a presentation there and she did her presentation in an app. She created an app. Um, she's actually the one that uh, did the Mackie app that's here on the screen. Um, that's all about macaroni and cheese. So um, love that app. Okay. I am yes. a mac, I'm <laughs> mac and cheese aficionado. Um, and to have an app that is entirely dedicated to mac and cheese is like, she, she spoke to my soul. <laughs> she, um, she did really good. And she's really, um, this was um, a very shy student. Um, and she has just, over the year, I mean, her mother has just talked about how much she has blossomed and it's been through Mad Learn. I mean, she um, she did the student showcase and she used the app at, at C Camp and she's just blossomed into this 
I, I don't know. I mean, she's like telling everybody about it and teaching everybody. Um, we also use, we have uh, once a month, we partner with our local library and Gear Up goes in and we present something to the parents while the librarian uh, does an activity with the students. So we offer kind of babysitting for while we're having an event. And we, the first time we did it, we had the campers come and do Mad Learn with students teaching them the on the platform. And now that's all they're doing. They keep asking for it. So, and it keeps growing with either students coming in and working on their apps that they've already created or they're creating new apps. So that's it's been a really good tool for us to use everywhere. And right now my Gear Up ambassadors are working on a Gear Up app that they're going to use at the board meeting um, at the end of the year when we have our, our school board meeting. Uh, they're wanting to present, you know, what Gear Up has done this past year, what we're doing. And so the ambassadors are creating an app and they're gonna present that app at the school board meeting for um, that presentation. Love that. Yes. Love that. Another yes. great idea for us, right? Get your kids to showcase what they're doing at a board meeting or right. meeting or principal meeting or whatever that might be. Um, but shine that light on them. Candy, that's amazing. I love that. Thank you. Um, the other project they're working on that we are just getting started um, and I'm hoping it, it comes through is they are working on a school planner app. So our school does not allow cell phones, but they have Chromebooks and the apps work on the Chromebooks. So, and then they have their cell phone at home so they can still log in back and forth to make that work. And nobody keeps up with the paper planners. They're expensive. And so um, one of our students had started working on one for herself. And so as a project, the ambassadors have decided to take this on and they're going to try to create a school planner app. So um, that I'm really looking forward, you know, to that with them. That's awesome. Candy, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for sharing those tidbits and snor stories with us. Um, just so, so exciting to hear that. And I know we are um, a couple minutes past time. So thank you all.